Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, the YouTube channel where we value things like calm, logic and rationality. And the internet can be a place where you don't find much of that. So we hope that some of you find the channel services useful in that regard. Uh, now, what have I got for you today, Sudoku-wise? Well, it's a puzzle called Reunion. And this is by Playmaker6174. Now, Playmaker6174 is a phenomenal solver of Sudoku. And I think also uh, becoming, or maybe already a very good setter, I think I did a puzzle by Playmaker6174 called Union, but it was a while ago, and I can't remember exactly how it went. But this is presumably the follow-up to that one. And we've got some Renban lines and some arrows in the grid. So I'm looking forward to trying this. The testers say this is a beautiful puzzle. So we should be in, as always, for a treat. Um, I don't have much news today. The only thing I wanted to mention is that if, if you're a patron of the channel, please check out this month's uh, patron reward. Um, we've, we're heading up towards a thousand correct entries so far for that. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning Bubba is you keys, um, definitely get your answers in by the 20th of March. Uh, just send us an email and remember you need to send us some digits and a four letter answer. Some of you still sending in five, um, five letter answers and that's not gonna work. Um, right, anyway, that all said and done. Let's get on with the rules of this one. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So that means those three digits there. Let's put some digits in. Let's put one, three, and five. One plus three plus five equals, yep, nine. So that would be how this arrow could work. Hopefully it will be exactly how that arrow works, but I doubt it. Uh, digits along a purple line cannot repeat and form a consecutive set in any order. So we've got some very short Remban lines today. So let's have a look at this one. What we're being told here is let's imagine we worked out this cell was a one. If this cell was a one, we know the Remban must be filled with a consecutive set of digits. So the Remban must now be filled with one, two, and three but we wouldn't know the order. So it could be like that, or it could be like that, but it must be one of those two things. So yeah, just make sure no repeats on REM bands and they form a consecutive set and you'll be good to go. Now do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. And we've got a whole syzygy of circles today. I do love arrow puzzles where there are syzygies involved because it allows me to say the word syzygy and for some reason that makes me smile. Um, now, what can we do here? We can do something with these cells, I think, in column three. That's because these five arrow cells, um, the minimum we could put into these cells would be a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. Now, if you add up one, two, three, four, and five, you'll get 15. So we know that these two circles here must sum to at least 15, which means they can't include a digit as low as a five. They must be made up of sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. Um, yeah, and we've got the same going on in column seven. Look again. We've got these five arrow cells all appearing in the same column, so they all must be different digits. The triangular number for five is 15, so that circle and that circle have to add up to at least 15, so they are six, seven, eight, nine. So there's probably some reason that all these have to be different now, but if you're spotting that immediately, well done. Um, because I'm not, I can see these two have to be different. Uh, now what do we do? The answer is I don't, <laughs> the answer is I don't know. Well, oh, okay. One other point to bear in mind about a sequence of five arrow cells in the same row or column is that because these have to add up to 15, what we didn't say what I didn't say is that they can't add up to more than 17 because if they added up to more than 17 this would have to be more than an 8-9 pair and that won't work and that means that these arrow cells here can't even have an 8 on them because although it might look at first blush like we could go 8 and 1 here and make this a 9 the consequence of that would be this would be a minimum of 2-3-4 which also adds up to 9 and you'd end up with repeated 9s 
or worse than that, double digit numbers of all things in column six. So you can't put eight in any of those cells. Now that means in this column, eight and nine, let's think about very high digits. We can put, we can't put eight or nine on the arrows. We could put one of them here. So there must be an eight or a nine on these sort of herring bones at the top. And, and they're Ren bands, so one of these has to be quite high. So it looks like we're heading up towards some sort of quadruple in column six somehow. But I don't quite know how. I'm actually tempted to do I'm actually tempted to do set on column three and column four, and maybe these two columns as well, um, because there's so much communication, especially for this one, because these, well, these one cell arrows are basically just duplicating their digit into the, into the other column. Yeah, let's do that actually. So those cells there um, are the digits one to nine once each, as a complete column of the Sudoku. And those cells there, which we'll make yellow. Can we see yellow? Yeah, that's fine. So these cells are also a set of the digits one to nine. So at this point, we can say green, the green digits are the same as the yellow digits. And therefore, if we were to add up the green digits and add up the yellow digits, we would get the same number. And the number we'd get would be 45, which is a secret. I only tell special people. Now I may not need to tell you why that's that why that's true um, today. So let, let's let's elide over that for a moment and just see see what I'm thinking in terms of the logic. So I know that if I remove those two digits from the green set and I remove this digit from the yellow set, like that, it must still be true to say that the yellow digits left over add up to the same as the green digits left over because they added up to the same thing before. I just removed the same total from each side. And I can do that again there, look. And I can, these two are the same digits, so I can remove those. Those two are the same digits, so I can remove those. Okay, and we end up with five digits have to add up to two digits. Um, but two of the digits are linked by a Ren band. So these, so those two digits can't be miles apart. Well, they can only be exactly one apart. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's a nine. That's really clever. Good grief. So this tiny little Ren band line is actually important because, because the difference between, well, so let's go through this, uh, logically we know that the green cells this domino here sums to the identical total of five yellow cells in in column four but we know that these two are a maximum of one apart well then why do i say that they are exactly one apart well that means that these the difference between this green and these four yellow cells must be exactly equal to one that means that must be a nine because the minimum I can make those four cells add up to is 10. And if I make them add up to anything else, I'd have to put a very strange number in here. So this has to be one, two, three, and four. That has to be nine. And these two, we don't know about, <laughs> which is weird. That's so weird. You just, you don't know anything about these two. Well, you know, they're not nine. Um, no, that's very peculiar. But I think that I still think the logic is going. Ah, that's not nine now. So there must be a one on this arrow because once we remove its ability to hold nine, we remove the ability of the arrow to be a two, three, four arrow. So it must have a one on it. Okay, I'm just going to do the same thing on these two columns as well, just to check whether we've got anything similar going on. So we'll make those blue. Can we see that? I can just about see what's going on there. And I'll make those orange. So again, the blue digits add up to the same as the orange digits, so I can start cancelling arrows down. Let's cancel some arrows, then cancel that arrow at the bottom. 
So this doesn't look quite as interesting, does it? So we've got these three cells add up to the same as those five cells, with each one of these being one apart. Yeah, oh no, no, this is fine. This is fine. So what's the absolute minimum I could put into these two cells? Remember that these three digits add up to the same as those five digits. Well, the minimum I could put into those cells would be one and two, which means that I need to achieve at least a difference of three between this three three digits here and these three digits here well I can only achieve that's that that's exactly what I will achieve so these are all exactly these three digits here are one less than their counterparts on the right and that must be a one two pair that's really clever so that ah so that arrow is at least three four now so that's at least seven and it can't be more than nine or it can't be nine so so there must be a three on this arrow because it it can't be four plus five now. So this has definitely got a three on it and it's either three, four or three, five. Well, that's interesting because it's not three, five because I've not put five in column four yet. So there must be a five down there, which means that's not five. And my phone is buzzing at me, but it's not Mark, that's good. So this is a three foot pair, this is a seven. This is not a seven, so this is six or eight. And sorry, I realize I just stopped. That's because I can't see what that means. Obviously, if this is six, this is one, two, three. And that, oh, actually, that's interesting. If that's six, that would be one, two, three. This would have to then be four, five in order to keep this down to a single digit number. Ah, ah, this digit is in one of the circles. Because whatever this digit is, it can't go in these squares. Because if it went in those squares, it can't go in this square by Sudoku. And if it goes in this square or this square, it gets sort of transposed into the, into the same column it's already existing in. And we can't have two digits in the same, well, we can't have two types of nine existing in the same space that just wouldn't work it would break the space time continuum or something um, hmm okay so one of these squares is a nine so what's the other one then so one of the so if that's a nine, this one, yeah, that could be, if that's a six, it could go on the other, yeah, no, it, oh yeah, now I see. So that you can put, you could put a six here, for example, on the, on the nine arrow. Hang on. No, something's going wonky with my brain about that. That doesn't feel like I can do that, but I can't I articulate why. I don't want to do that. Um, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. If, if, this is weird actually, this is weird. I feel like I should, this is something I should have just been able to state instantly, but I, I wasn't able to do that, but I think I can explain now. You can't put that, this digit, or indeed this digit, in any of the arrow cells. Because if you do, if you do, if I put this red digit here, remember that these arrows add up to the sum of these two digits. So these two are essentially cancel out from the equation and that would be implying that those four digits have to add up to this. Well, you can't make four digits add up to a single, di single digit total because one plus two plus three plus four is 10. So that doesn't work. 
And I think that, I mean, it just doesn't work. However you do it, you can make that one red and try and put it on that arrow. You'll run into exactly the same problem. These four digits will have to add up to that one. So you just can't do it. It won't work. So that means that these five digits are not the same as these two. So this yeah this is lovely isn't it wow 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 okay so these two digits are green that's what we've learned and by green i mean those two digits because whatever these two are we've just proved they can't go on the arrows they can't go in these two squares because again then they get transposed back into the same column and the space time continuum will be broken again so so one of these well, I don't know what the order is, I don't think. One of these is the 9, and this one is the other one. So that squares a 6, 7, 8, or 9. I suppose that's, that's new information for us. And this square has to be 5, 6, or 8, just on the basis it can't be 7 or 9. That can't be 9. Um, so the, can... So that, I don't want this to be able to be 8 anymore. It can't be 8, because if it's 8, that has to be 7 or 9. Yeah, actually, that's weird. So one way to think about diagonal, these two-cell diagonal REM bands is, is like white Kropke dots, aren't they? They're, it's like a white Kropke dot in, in that gap there. So there must be an odd and an even digit on each of these two-cell REM bands. Okay. So, what does this mean? So maybe I pencil mark these. Again, legend has it that there is a man in South Kensington who does a lot of those sorts of things. Um, now, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so these can't be nines, obviously. Yeah, because I know there's a nine in one of those two squares. Sorry, I'm being very slow about this. Um, so now, is it right to say that's a quadruple? It does seem to be. So these squares have to be 1, 2, and 9 to complete that box, and that's not 9. <laughs> that's weird. Okay. 5, 6, 7s, and 8s. Still don't know what this is. One of these is nine. Oh, look. Right. Okay. So this coming down to be six or seven means one of the. Well, it means we don't. We, yes, I see. We remove eight from these two cells. It's because we only have the option now of nine in one of them, six, seven in the other. So hang on. So in this column now, eight has to be down here. This is really strange. This is really, really clever. And. I'm, I'm just pausing because I don't understand what I just did there. But I seem to have made an enormous deduction. So because I could rule out 8 from here. So this Remban does amazing things. It really does. So yeah, because I knew these two squares have to map to this square. As soon as I can eliminate 8 from this square I'm good to go and I eliminate 8 by this square by finding this 9-7 pair ruling out the possibility of there being a consecutive digit with 8 good grief and that then transposes up there moves the 8 in the column down and changes that square to have to be a 6 and that's going to do damage because now I've got a 1-2-3 triple here and a 4-5 pair there and that's a 9 good grief okay so this is five, seven, eight. So there's no, oh, I've got to be careful here because I keep seeing, maybe the problem I'm having is that I'm seeing these arrows sometimes as rem bands and vice versa. But that's a five. If that's a five, that's a six. If that's an eight, that's a seven. That's okay. These ones can't have six on them. So this is five, seven, or eight. That, ah, ah, that's not nine. So that's got to be the six, seven. Which means that must be 9. Aha! So now we could almost give these their own colour. Um, because they've been well behaved. Look, we'll make those red. They're the same. But we don't know. We don't know whether they're 6s or 7s yet. At least I don't think I do. Um, so now the herringbones at the top of column 7. 
are exactly equal to 6, 8 and 9 and we know that these must be exactly one greater than each of their counterparts here. Oh, OK, we could have got this from column 6 as well, but it was quite, it was quite amusing to realise that that's how these work. So these are 5, 7 and 8. That's not 9. So that's not... Oh, these are one less, so that's not 8. So 8 is up here. And 8 is over here, so 8 is in one of these. And that doesn't do anything. This square has got to be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And it's not 1 or 2, because we've got a 1, 2, 9 triple in the column. Um, right. Now this is a 6, 7 arrow, so it must have a 1 and a 2 on it. And it's either 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 4. And the 9 arrow, therefore, is either 3, 6, or 4, oopsie. It's either 3, 6, or 4, 5, depending on the world and how it turns out. So, okay. So that means, what does that mean? How are we going to resolve this? Um, do we? <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Let me just think again. So what can we do now? We've got four five pair here. Something in those two cells. Um, I don't know. There must be some way of maybe maybe this is as far as we're allowed going to be allowed to get from these four interesting columns that we've worked on. Is that true, or can we go further? That's a three, four, or five, so that can't be a one because this, these have to be consecutive. Hmm, I don't like the look of this. Uh, so do we use three cell Rembrandts now? I'm not just exactly sure how we can do that. Four, five, six, it's actually, it's quite interesting, look. If that was a three, six arrow, how would we fill that Renban? Only with 789, I think. So that would be incredibly constraining, which means it's probably correct. So if this is 3, 6, you can't, you can't do 1, 2, 3 on the arrow. You can't do 4, 5, 6 or 3, 4, 5. So you'd have to do 789. And that would... I don't see why that's a problem, um, but obviously it would be quite useful to know it. What about this one then? Let's try that one. So in this one, we've got, we can't have an eight or a nine on this because that's going to lead to needing to have a seven on it, which we can't have. Six. <sighs> Yeah, okay, and if there was a 3 in here, then this would have to be a 4, 5, 6, which would lead to a 6 here and a 4, 5 pair, and that would give us this digit. So we're close here to not to learning something about the puzzle, I think. We just haven't quite worked it out yet. So, where do we look to learn more? Is it this one? This one feels much less appetizing because, well, I know it, I, I, I suppose it doesn't have a nine on it anywhere, but that not that the only thing I know about it? Wow, okay, <laughs> okay, we have to think. How is it that we're going to make more progress here? answer is I don't know 
Oh, yes, I do. Right, it's Sudoku. That's always what I should do when I get stuck, is think about doing a Sudoku puzzle using the powers of Sudoku. Where is 6 in that box? The answer is in one of those two cells. Now, if 6 is in one of those two cells, where does it go in box 5? And it seems to have to go there. And that is a relief, because now, all of a sudden, I know what that arrow is. That's a 1, 2, 3 arrow. So, oh, so that's not 3, 6. That's 4, 5. That's not what I was anticipating. Okay, so now we've got a 7, 8 here, which means we've got a 7, 8 there. We've got to put 5 in this column somewhere. So 5 goes at the bottom where it accompanies the 6, which is confirming our red highlighting. So we've invented a new type of X-Wing fighter there, red 6. Um, and we can... So what's that done for us? Has it done more than more than just tidy up some pencil marks or not. Six has to be in one of those cells. Oh, so has this become... Oh, yeah, actually, let's look at this arrow again. Now, not arrow, this Renban again. Now you can't have a three in here because that would be four, five, and six, and the five and six would both have to hurry into this square and simultaneously be five and six at the same time, and this is not a Schrodinger cell. So that doesn't work. In fact, it just doesn't work anyway because we can't put six on the, on the Remban at all. So that's not three, so that's a three at the top, which means that's a one and a two. So these have to be from three, four, five, and six. Three, four, five. So it's got to have four. Yeah, so we've got to have four and five on the Renban. And the five here tells us where the five goes. There's got to be a four on the Renban and there's no six on the Renban. So in fact, that's a three, four pair. And that means there's a five in one of those two cells. Five here would be interesting because that would push up this arrow. Um... And this row still needs ones, twos, and eights in it. Ones, twos, and eights. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the eight is over here. It's got to be in this domino. So that cell gets resolved to be a seven. That's a seven. That's an eight. That's an eight. And that is very, very useful for what reason? Oh, it does give me an eight here. So now those two cells have become a 6-9 pair, which means that's not 9, which means this is 9 in the middle of box 5. I've got a 1-2 pair here, so this row... Oh, so I see we've got 3... Oopsie! <laughs> Whoops! We've got 3, 4 and 5 into these squares. Which... Okay, these squares have got to be 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s. So we can't, this digit can't be too big, can it? Because the best we could do here is, oh, we can't even have six here, no. Okay, so we, this digit has to be from one, two, th three, four, and five, and it's not three because of the three here. So, so it has got a three on it. Ah, right. So this Renban, because it's got to be made up, it's the three digit Renban that must include the dig must be made up of the digits one, two, three, four, and five. However, we cut that set, we're always going to pick up a three. So it's either going to be one, two, three, two, three, four, or three, four, five. So there's always a three on the Renban. So you can never have a three here because this cell sees every cell on the Renban. So that is not three. It's not quite done it yet, has it? Oh. Yeah, okay, and now we'll just reverse that logic and do it the other way around. How can there be five on the Renban now? Well, there can't, because if you put five on the Renban, the Renban is five, four, three, and now this square's got a big problem, because it can't be anything. Because if, it, if there's a five, four, three in some order in these three cells, they all three see that cell and rule out its ability to be four, four or five. So that means there's no five on the Renban. This is just lovely, isn't it? It's really clever stuff. It's very clever as well, because these two columns, which were so intricate, are still... 
Yeah, it's almost like they're a puzzle outside the puzzle. And Playmaker 6174 has hidden other sort of gems into, into the other places. Now, now we know there's no five on this. So this Remban now has to have two on it, doesn't it? So it's either going to be one, two, three or two, three, four. And that square is not a two. So I think there has to be a two in one of those cells. And I think that means that cell is not a two. So this is one or eight. Oh, no, hang on. Look, I've got a three, four pair in this row. So that's got to be a five, actually. Ah, now that's interesting because that square is going to be under pressure now. So that square can't be higher than four because this square has got to be a maximum of nine. So this square is six, seven, eight or nine. That can't be a three. So that can't be an eight. Um... No. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So what does that mean? The answer is I don't know, except that that five I can now place in box number four. Look, that five sees that square. So that's a seven and this square and this square and this square is the five by Sudoku. Now this square is no longer four. Um, I'm not sure if I can do more than that. This is a seven. Oh, and this is on the herringbone. So we know the direction of the herringbone movement. This, these are all, this, the blue ones are all lower than the orange ones because the blue ones got the extra one and two as a bonus, um, uh, sort of free and gratis. So we've got to keep these blue ones a bit down. So that's an eight. Those are not eight. That's not. Oh, this is this one isn't seven or eight. That's got to be five now. So that's got to be eight. That's got to be nine. That's got to be six. And the herring bones all get finished. This puzzle is very clever. It's very clever. The way these number these numbers are just dancing together. Now I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in box number two, which means that must be a six, seven pair. So these are from three, four and eight now, just to complete the column. I've not put eight into it yet. That's a three or a four. So that's a two, three or a four. Nine has, oh, nearly. Nine has to be in a domino over here. Um. Oh, I'll tell you what I haven't thought about. That's this Renban in the context of a 4-5 on this arrow. I thought about it with the 3-6, but I don't think I've ever thought. Oh, that's beautiful. Right, this this line here is not a 1-2-3 Renban. Because if it was, this cell would have no value. So this Renban cannot include the digits 1, 2 or 3, or 4 or 5. So it must be made up of 6s, 7s, 8s and 9s. And those are not nine. So there's a six, seven, eight triple in the top row now, which means these squares have got to be all low digits. That means that's got to be a low digit because we can't, this can't be five, six because there's already a six here. So we've got three low digits. We've almost got like quintuples, look. Well, we have got, a, yeah, we have got a quintuple in the top row, but that's just a corollary of the six, seven, eight triple. So, okay, what does that mean? So this is six, seven, eight, nine. So it must have seven, it must have seven and eight on it. That square is not six or eight, I've just noticed by Sudoku. So this is only seven or nine. So there must be an eight in one of those two cells. Oh, that doesn't do anything. There's an eight in one of those two cells. And there must be a seven in one of these three cells. Bother. 
Oh. One, two, three, four quadruple in box four. So those squares have to be six, sevens, and nines. Ah, six, seven, nine, triple in column one. So that is eight in the corner. That's one. That's one. That's two. That's one. That's two. Here we go. Uh, that digit is now an eight. That's not an eight at the top of the grid. Three, four, one here. So now what have we got? We've got all sorts of things going on. Um, we've got a six, seven, nine, <laughs> one here. So this is not one. Two, three, four. How can I not know what this Remban is? Oh, I do know what it is. Well, I know it's two, three, and four, but that's... Is that helpful? Uh, probably is. I can't see how, though. There's definitely a two in this domino. No, sorry. I'm not quite understanding how that works yet, I don't think. What about this column, then? This column still needs... Uh, twos, threes, and fours into it. So that square is not, oh, that square's not a four. So that's a two or a three. So, oh, right, that's good. That's done it. Right, so now that's interesting because now in this column, there's definitely a four on the Remban in one of those two places. Therefore, you can't have another four in this position. So that's a three, which means that's a three, that's a four. So I've now got a 2-4 pair on this Remban, which fixes the 3 above it. So that's not 3. Okay. So now, what does that do? Oh. No. 3 is down here. Oh, Bobbins, I can't see how to do this. Okay, that's not 3. So this is a 2-4 pair. Do I have to be careful about this being a 2-4 pair for your uniqueness? Not really, because the arrow will fix it if I can get that digit. So, no. Okay, not sure. Um, right. So where do we look for our next deduction? Anybody? Does anybody know the answer? I suspect many of you do, but I don't seem to know. Two, four pair here, six, nine pair over here. Um, do we know, let's have a think about whether we can pencil mark some more in this box, although I don't really like the look of that. Ooh, no. Can we do a six, seven pair here? No, okay, I'm properly stuck now. There must be something else we can do. I can get, oh, five here looks, I can get rid of five from both of those cells. Does that reveal something to me? Don't think so. Uh, oh no, it's all crammed to an absolute, an absolute hole, hasn't it? Nine? Nine is in one of those two cells. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, look at column one and ask where six goes. Six has to be in this domino, so six is not there. Now that immediately means one is not here. Oh good, I have got what looks like a deadly pattern, but shouldn't be. So... So now I have got a sort of revealed 2-4 pair in this column. Which means I need 1s, 6s, 7s and 9s into these cells. Oh, yeah, the question is, because there's a 2 in one of those and a 2 in one of these, this must be a 2. Aha! Does that do something? It means this is a 1-3 pair. Oh, 
<laughs> uh, I'm sure it does something. Uh, don't know what though. So one, six, seven, and nine at the top. We're going absolutely mad with pencil marking. I would delight mark with this, wouldn't we? Um, oh, okay. Here's a small point. Where does four go? Oh, that's beautiful. Good grief. Okay, where does four go in row three? And the answer is there. Because it can't go here, because that would need to be a 3 or a 5, which it can't be. So 4 goes here and removes itself off all sorts of places. So this can't be 5 anymore, because it can't have a consecutive digit next to it. So this is a 1, 2, 3, triple. 4 comes in down here. That's 4, that's 3. That's 3 on the triple. This is a 1, 2 pair. This is not 3 anymore. Um... It's probably doing something, but I can't quite see what it is. So let's check this box then. We need fives and sevens into those two cells. And we need... Oh, we've got a five here. Okay, so that's five. Why couldn't I see that immediately? I don't know. That's seven, that's six. So this becomes a one. And that means... Ah, so now we've got this six here, forcing a six, oh, six onto this Remban. So that must be seven now. That must be nine. So that's seven, which makes this two, and that unwinds our two twos and fours down at the bottom of the grid. Now that has become a six nine pair. Five is fixing stuff at the top of the grid there. That's now become a three, which doesn't seem to resolve anything. Although the one, two pair does. So that's a four. This three, oh, I see, yeah. It's got to be on the Remban with a two, not a one. So that resolves the ones and the twos at the top of the grid, which resolves the ones and the twos in the blue. So that's no longer four, and we can't put one. So this is a two, three pair. This one is still giving us more joy. This is giving us more joy. This is now a 4-8 pair, which is also joyful. And, oh, okay, what about those squares? Ones and sevens. So that's one. That's seven. This square here has got to be six or eight, and it can't be eight. So it's got to be six, which resolves the six, nine pair. Of course it does. Of course it does. Six and nine go into those squares. We need an eight in this column. We need two and something into those squares. Two and nine. So I think that's two and that's nine. And I think that's the puzzle. Let's see. Yay. <laughs> that's fantastic. That is a fantastic Sudoku. There is so much to do. It's so clever. I mean, the, the start is very, very beautiful. And it's almost a discrete puzzle in and of itself, isn't it? With these, each of these little runs, they're like little chocolate bars that you can sort of, find raisins in if you look hard enough in these this column this column and then this column and this column and then after that well now let's just stick there for a moment i did love the the, the i some of the ideas in this because because they they seem really obvious once you see them but for some reason i couldn't see them i couldn't see immediately that these two cells had to go down there which they do I love the idea of the one and the two here with these herring bones as well. That's very, very cute. And then there was a lot of clever stuff around this Renban and this section. But everything was clever. The way you could whittle down the corner Renbans. It's just a really good puzzle, this. It's a really good puzzle. Every single clue has been thoughtfully inserted into this puzzle to make the set the solver go whoa there's another clever thing whoa there's another clever thing loved it loved it i hope you guys enjoyed it too let me know in the comments how you got on i do enjoy reading the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition cracking the cryptic